Welcome all listeners. It's 10 o'clock and welcome to another exciting episode of a LinkedIn talk show series, Productivity League. We believe that productivity is not just a metric. It's a way of life. It's an ever-growing habit where we learn each day and implement the learnings to be at least 0.1% better every new day. In a talk show series, Productivity League, our mission is clear. We want to build a dynamic and constructive learning community around this vital topic, productivity. The objective is that we all grow together with the collective knowledge and experiences of our entire community. I am Kunal Sinha, your moderator, and today we're diving deep into a topic that's a shift post-COVID, and it is a fundamental soul of modern organizations. Best practices to manage a hybrid workforce. So let me quickly introduce the speakers. In this episode, we're privileged to have two distinguished guest speakers. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Arvind Raghunathan, the Chief Technology Officer at Yava.ai, and Mr. Swapnil Tripathi, Chief Revenue Officer at V360.ai. Together, they bring a wealth of experience and insights to this crucial conversation. Mr. Arvind Raghunathan has around 20 plus years of work experience in diverse technology domains, cloud, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, and many more. Before joining Yava, Arvind held various key positions at prominent organizations, including Netcom, Misa, VMware, Cape Gemini, and IBM. Arvind happens to be a Madras University alumnus and is majored in computer science. He has won various accolades and awards from prestigious IT publications. Our second guest, Mr. Swapnil Tripathi, also happens to be a Madras University alumnus. So that is a sweet coincidence today. And three cheers to the Madras University alumnus people out there. Swapnil also brings around 20 years of experience in esteemed organizations and has helped multiple companies in generating 120 plus crores revenue so far in his career. And before starting V360, he successfully exited as an EdTech founder. And prior to that, he has held key positions in prominent organizations, including Reliance, Tata, ICICI, and MD. Welcome again, Mr. Arvind and Mr. Swapnil. Thanks, Kunal. Thanks, Kunal, for the introduction. Yeah, yeah. So let me quickly explain the structure of today's event to both of you, and the, then we can quickly get into the discussion. So to start with, uh, what I would want uh, that both of you can quickly express your own thoughts and insights on today's discussion, just a quick one. And also tell us something exciting about your own journey so far. And then what we can do is we can get into the some specific questions that we have received from our listeners. And uh, on those questions, I would like to understand from both of you that how the same challenges have the niches addressed differently to young, to young high, go high growth startups who are exactly working into the same kind of domain of artificial intelligence. So getting into the real action, I invite Mr. Arvind to first of all express your quick thoughts and tell us something about your own journey. Sure, Kunal. Uh, good morning, Mr. Sapnam. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here with you all today. And I really thank uh, V360 for giving me this opportunity and uh, getting connected with you all. Uh, my journey so far, um, I'm very fortunate, I would say, uh, to be having a a diverse kind of an experience all the way from uh, uh, cloud to cybersecurity and the AI and ML. So as you all know, now AI and ML is no longer just in buzzword and it is getting implemented in each and every uh, product uh, on every second basis. So the AI and ML was my passion. I used to code uh, six years back. And not many people at the, those time know about the machine learning algorithms and other stuff very few and being used in some niche areas and thanks to newer tools and thanks to uh, ai becoming a commodity as to b2c uh, kind of a tool now uh, ai is everyone everywhere and everyone knows about it so uh, my journey is so far i mean again uh, worked in various uh, countries uh, with diff different position leadership position all the way to uh, the CTO position at Yaver. And Yaver is a very energetic uh, company. We've been in two years. We created products uh, around AI and uh, full stack development machine learning. And uh, we have have uh, clients from five different countries so far. And our aspiration is to become that leading AI partner in the next couple of years. That's the uh, introduction brief. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Urban. Um, thanks for your thoughts, and we are really privileged to have you here with your wonderful experience. 
So Swapna is handing over to you now. Uh, your thought about today's event and uh, something about your journey. Yeah, thanks, Kunal. And uh, once again, uh, we are privileged to have you on board, uh, Arvind, uh, as one of our esteemed speakers. Uh, my journey. Uh, so one common, another common thread. I'll tell you, uh, Kunal, that you know both of us started our career at the same year also. So I, I passed out. From, I did my MBA from IPS Hyderabad, and I started working from 2004, where I saw Arvind also started his career. So exactly 20 years. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so there, there is another common thread. So Arvind, I am a pass out of DG Vishnu College, uh, Anna Nagar. So all right, right. <laughs> so uh, uh, coming to uh, uh, my journey. Uh, i have been throughout a uh, sales professional uh, and you know i am very enthusiastic about uh, sales as a profession uh, and uh, as kunal rightly said that you know one day we were sitting and calculating that how much of sales i would have done in my 20 years of career so there we came out to some rough figure uh, now the whole objective here is that you know post covid uh, you know the working patterns have changed uh, you know hybrid work from home is becoming a norm and you know organizations are you know looking forward to various means and ways how they can uh, the employees can be more productive irrespective from where they are uh, you know working so to cut it short v360.ai is uh, you know try to uh, trying to be a you know global player as far as employee uh, productivity and workforce analytics is concerned and that is where the journey started uh, between three of us and it's uh, you know we are very proud of the fact that you know uh, we have come a long way so uh, i think uh, this this particular uh, event is more we would love to hear arvind more uh, you know and uh, i have certain set of questions uh, for arvind uh, uh, which he can take it as you know as he wants and uh, that is how we will be going uh, uh, with the flow of this uh, particular event so Arvind, the first question I have for you is: How can we thought thoughtfully evaluate the performance of a hybrid workforce while maintaining a strong commitment to respecting the privacy boundaries of our employees? So, I want to have your thoughts. That you know, uh, first of all, I would like to understand your journey or experience of hybrid as a CTO. I am sure uh, you know you you will be working with a large team. and you know what kind of work patterns you have in your organization and how you ensure that irrespective of from where the employees are working uh, you know their uh, performance or productivity is maintained without getting too much into the privacy hey thanks swapnil that's a really an interesting question when to start off that i would say that i am still an hybrid worker myself today i am sitting in chennai whereas my the entire office is in coimbatore 600 kilometers away so i have been a hybrid worker for i would say now around maybe around 4 years uh working for a company uh, in middle east i have been working in india for a middle east company for 2 years now with yavar used to do uh, frequent travel to coimbatore but i am consider myself most as a hybrid work uh, worker so coming to your question of evaluating the performance uh, of the new age or the hybrid culture and also thoughtfully thinking about the privacy boundaries is uh, really going to be a delicate balance uh, it's not like not achievable it's definitely doable uh, but we need to uh, follow some measured and cautious step in order to achieve the same some points which uh, comes to my mind is uh, the first and foremost would be setting the expectations right it's one of the paramount thing we need to clearly communicate the performance expectations and criteria to the employees let there be uh, hybrid employee or uh, an office worker or completely a remote worker expectations of their uh, performance has to be clearly communicated well in advance and uh, another metrics or the performance metric i believe is to focus more on the outcome like outcome meaning that for a sales individual it might be a sales target for someone else a project uh, manager it might be like a project completion or a call center employee something like a customer satisfaction 
rather than going into the micromanagement activities and uh, monitoring and other stuff, I believe strongly believe that there has to be a performance metrics which has to tie along with the outcomes. And another point is um, reg- provide kind of a regular updates on their progress of each employee because now no longer or the work culture is kind of an hybrid. Um, you think that the employees are uh, happy or the employees are supposed to do the productive levels. It may not be the case. So having a regular performance updates or and kind of a checkpoint with the employees is very paramount this uh, day and age and this work culture. And uh, most of this task, I would say it is going to be a lot of responsibility or an additional responsibility uh, will fall on the uh, managers, the immediate managers of an employee. The managers are now not only going to do the uh, managerial activities, but also uh, should work as a coach for the employees, meaning that get the feedback, talk to them, have a clear, uh, I mean, open conversation with your employees, get to know their uh, day-to-day activities, their problems, if they're facing any get to know their strength, weakness, and act as a coach, work on skill development. If they need some kind of a training, uh, work on that, give them the training. Or sometimes it might be just some small tools which they need in order to uh, uh, increase their productivity and in turn improve improve the company's uh, goals and other stuff. So the manager plays a real uh, a crucial role now than the earlier ways to have a constant touch with all their subordinates and to make sure that everyone is happy in achieving their performance as per their KPIs and KRAs. And also work on a proper kind of a system, like proper rules in place, rather than just communicating the outcome, what they need or what company is expecting over an email or over just a video call. Make sure you implement some uh, tools, ERM, ERP, CRM, some kind of a tools where the employee can also uh, every now and then go back to the tool, check what is my priorities, what is my performance uh, uh, indications, what should I do on a day-to-day basis. And that will they will be aware of what next and how they can improve on their own also. Some of the don'ts, I would say, uh, I myself have seen it's at an organization, uh, some weird kind of an, uh, uh, breaching the privacy kind of a boundaries. Like there are some companies when the COVID starts, they even uh, send some CCTV uh, or a camera by the company to even monitor the employees during the work hours. And also there are some companies which I know uh, monitors uh, how many times the desktop is kind of locked, unlocked how many times these these are going on, how many emails an employee is sending per day. And the weird of all is like some of the managers, which I have also uh, heard and uh, that uh, they say that uh, they monitor the uh, employees, WhatsApp and other social medias, their personal areas and see the last seen uh, time and then call them and say that, uh, hey, you're online for the last five minutes, but you are not replied to my email yet. So these kind of, um, I would say, not an ethical way at this moment. We have to respect everyone's privacy and other stuff. Being a CCTV cameras and these kind of micromanagement uh, is definitely infringing the employee's privacy. And instead of doing, doing those, it has to be a focused, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be a focus-based approach. We need to work on the goals like their targets, sales target, or customer satisfaction. These should be the uh, paramount of measurement. And uh, again, um, it is becoming a common, and me being one of the uh, the use case here, employees can work away from their home, I mean, the company's headquarters. Like, for example, I've been in my headquarters of my company was in Qatar, and I've been working from India. So it is very uh, important to have a strong data and security practices and also protect those 
compliance of these employees according to their entries um, like if we are at european national make sure that all the uh, whatever you collect the data from the employees and other stuff follows uh, the regulations like gdpr and if you are into some kind of healthcare and pharma make sure all these guidelines like hipaa and everything is being considered so since it's going to be a diverse kind of uh, environment we have to make sure that this compliance is also uh, being monitored or captured so that there is no deviation or any privacy violations on it uh some of the other considerations which i would say is the leaders of the organization should set an example by respecting the privacy and fostering the culture of trust and respect within the organization this definitely improves the trust that the employees keep towards the organization they feel that they are part of it in every journey or every day towards the journey and the vision of the company and uh, the last point i would say is have a policy of the performance evaluation but have it dynamic make sure that you don't if you create a policy two years before during the covid make sure you revisit the policy and align them to the changing needs which are happening uh, out there in the world and make sure that these are the privacy and other uh, regulations are being kept and being updated every now and then don't have the policy fixed and rigid make sure we revisit the policies and make sure that these policies aid in increasing the performance of the employees at the same time protect their privacy and uh, not being too intrusive into their personal uh, life i think these are some of the stuff and much more which we can follow to strike the balance between the increasing the performance of the hybrid workforce and also make sure that privacy cushion of the employees are at here very true very true uh, arvind and uh, i i uh, i think these thoughts uh, make uh, you know a lot of sense as far as uh, you know uh, we we kind of you know we have to be very clear uh, with our workforce also in terms of you know what are the expectation from where you started and i think that's a very valid point uh now uh, i would like to you know understand from you uh, because because of your background especially in machine learning and artificial intelligence uh you know what kind of role these technologies are going to play to you know in 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 supporting flexible or hybrid work model so how artificial intelligence or machine learning is going to come into role uh, play as far as hybrid work models are concerned how how they can make it more efficient more uh, you know effective as far as employees are concerned so what's your what are your thoughts on that sure so artificial intelligence and the machine learning are no more the buzzwords right so and definitely these are getting implemented in each and every product uh, let it be the uh, corporate software solutions and all the way to even uh, telephones to even TVs so uh, ai and ml play a very crucial role and every uh, tool or a software used in any corporate is empowered with a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning technology uh, every day in and uh, continuous it's a continuous uh, process which every company has taken it so for uh, maybe i'll split it into two where some of them are applicable to all the employees irrespective of them uh, hybrid or office workers or remote workers like the introduction of uh, the commercial tool or commercial uh, ai like chat gpt tools like chat gpt has completely uh, taken the ai driven tools and these can simplify and automate the routine task so it allows the employee to focus focus on much more critical work rather than doing the burden of repeating tasks that's one of the way it can improve the overall productivity of the employee these are one of the tool but this is chat gpt but um, there are in every day as we speak and all the collaboration tools the collaboration tools like uh, the major tools like teams uh, google meet zoom and everything has uh, after the covid or uh, during the times they have significantly improved the features and they consider the work nature to be more hybrid 
and certain features like for example earlier these tools were just you being used for a communication purposes because earlier start only with the voice over ip just an audio and then they added the video feature then added the, some kind of a uh, group or a meeting features this was before pre covid after this there have been a lot of with an ai and development on this there are a lot of features which includes like for example real time language translations so uh, again since you might have your uh, vendor or even your uh, uh, fellow employee might be in a different geographic region and if they are not native speakers of english so there are these kind of uh, modern tools just do the real time language translation and also do the transcription features these are some of the things which are now built in thanks to ai and advancement in machine learning there are a lot of these kind of tiny intelligent bots which got embedded into these tools and make this as a much easier to consume for the corporate world not only that uh, people who are using uh, the uh, softwares like office 365 or google meet uh, lately would have realized that they would have got an uh, email either uh, monday morning or uh, friday evening and analysis or analytics report of trends like for example say you have been uh, on uh, teams call or uh, voice call for such and such hours you been on meetings for these many hours a week you been sending these many emails so these kind of analytics gives the employee that what he is doing and it's also uh, helping in a way like a coach for them so telling them that hey you've been on a longer calls you've been on taking a back to back meetings why don't you take a break relax yourself and on the other side if there is not much of a work being done hey why don't you uh, there are some works which are pending there are some tasks being assigned Uh, it's better you focus now because it's been last week it's kind of not interaction as much it might be because of a leave reason or something else but if it's a genuine why don't you increase your pace so these kind of analytics are also getting built in and the best thing is these feature even though there are end of an add on which was not there earlier that these company make sure that these are uh, added to the base product itself and it's not going to be an add on feature in most of the cases we are trying to make these tool enrich with ai features for uh, let's say most of them are with no additional cost than earlier so definitely these ai uh, tools increases the efficiency of these virtual meetings and they also suggest like the agenda items managing the schedules and even summarizing the discussion so this is one of the new feature are uh, being getting introduced like for example if you have a one hour uh, talk even something like what we are doing right now and there is someone who uh, uh, was traveling who is not able to attend to a meeting like this or a tech talk like this the the ai summarizing tool can really summarize the entire one hour let's say one hour of uh, this event into the major bullet points key takeaways and summarizes in a very small thing so that the employees or any individual who want to get use who couldn't attend the meeting can get all the gist and the essence of it so these are some of the tools which is for all the employees irrespective of the nature of work and there are definitely some of the ai been built in to a uh, specific like the office goers and uh, hybrid kind of an employee one being that most of the companies have a uh, string down on the real estate of their offices so resource planning is one of the kind of a tool which is getting very popular now where uh, the employee if he wishes to go to office uh, let's say he has a meeting or today he feels like he wants to go to office been a long time and working at home so there is the resource planning kind of its, uh, some softwares what they can tell you that how many people are today coming to office will you be getting a desk space if you go today or is the meeting room is already booked or do you have the meeting room taken for you so rather than going to the office do they all the traveling and spending time and then reaching there and finding that the office is either full or the office is even closed because of some maintenance and other stuff 
these kind of tools improves those kind of uh, resource planning and uh, well in advance. Uh, the another area uh, which is of very important uh, is on the uh, cyber security. So uh, traditionally, all the security, all the corporates used to put uh, big firewalls in their core offices or in their headquarters, which used to work good uh, because the earlier everyone mostly used to come to office in a centralized area. So this was uh, a good option. But now with these hybrid works and uh, working people working completely remote, these firewalls are not going to be enough in terms of protecting the employee. So there are other traditional way of uh, connecting remotely. They call it as VPN and other stuff, which doesn't uh, help uh, the remote workers in terms of the flexibility. These are really a difficult process. They are a couple of passwords, a couple of passcodes that so gets disconnected frequently. So with a lot of uh, these kind of machine learning algorithm and AI and also a lot of technical advantage uh, advances in the cybersecurity area, there is a new way of securing the endpoints of an employees. And they also have an uh, acronym called SASE. So where even the cybersecurity now is more focused towards hybrid work, where it doesn't matter where the employee really sits, whether it's in sitting in office or remote or mix of both, the endpoints or the employees is always protected from the cyber threat. That's an advancement uh, or the way which is going towards the cybersecurity. And um, another area is everyone, it's evident to everyone is learning and development. So uh, learning and development is more now happening digitally uh, over the physical media. And definitely the AI uh, gives you uh, the tools or the AI enriched platforms gives you a personal learning experience and it recommends based on either your career, your day-to-day -day work and your skills improve uh, your knowledge and improve within your organization. And the last point is if done correctly, if used all the process and procedures and um, basically they calculated all the scenarios, there are a lot of cost management and optimization tools available, uh, AI driven of course. So using these tools, an organization can keep track of the remote related expenses because there are a lot of expenses now for even a remote worker, which a company pays to them. So these are also checked as made sure that these doesn't exceed a certain threshold. And definitely overall, if done right, there is going to be a huge optimization of cost, which the tool can help you today. So I think these are some of the points, uh, how an AI uh, is, uh, you know, enhanced the uh, hybrid workforce model and created some kind of an impact on them. Great. Uh, in fact, uh, I would also like to add something very interesting uh, as far as, you know, the AI uh, is concerned that, you know, especially in larger organizations, uh, we have observed that, you know, uh, after the advent of AI, uh, the top management uh, became more aware about the challenges and problems of the, you know, uh, people down the food chain. So, uh, this way also it has helped employees. You know, like say for instance, there are ways, you know, based on like, you know, Arvind has mentioned that, you know, there are ways wherein uh, it, there are various AI tools, uh, you know, which can study the working pattern of employees and even without, you know, employee going to uh, the, their supervisors or top management seeking help, uh, organizations can get to know the challenges faced by our uh, employees and can come to the rescue. And uh, that is another very healthy way of you know taking care of the workforce so another another uh, interesting question i have in mind uh, for you arvin is that can you please share some instances where you have encountered inventive or imaginative approaches that organizations have effectively used to improve the hybrid work experience for the employees so any instance which comes to your mind uh, which has been very inventive and effective as far as managing the hybrid workforce Right. See, as I said uh, earlier, I've been also like more than three years now, uh, been as a hybrid worker. 
So definitely uh, in couple of organization, I personally witnessed some of these kind of an uh, uh, instances approaches by the corporate. Some are innovative and some are um, you would say necessity on this. So some things like which I personally witnessed or uh, the organization giving some kind of an flexible stipend to the employees to uh, set up the personalized workstation at their home. Like they give you a kind of an uh, kind of an e-commerce platform, kind of a web page where they can, employees can choose uh, either it can be a uh, computer table, it can be a monitor, it can be an ergonomic uh, uh, chairs, it can be a noise cancellation uh, microphones or a headphones. But it's a bouquet of products which and uh, it's been given to the employee to choose according to their need. And that's been done by a couple of organization, even the organization which I earlier worked with. Along with uh, one step ahead on this is also when it comes to furniture and other stuff, uh, not everyone is, uh, has uh, all these ideas to fix in these kind of equipments and uh, furnitures and other uh, things. Tech, I guess most of the techies will be able to do it, but some kind of furniture fixing and other stuff, we may not have the right tools. So in this case, uh, the organization also partners with some kind of an concierge services. They have some kind of an organization who can help these uh, employees whenever they take uh, some kind of a furniture or some kind of an equipment which needs some fixing and other stuff. These concierge company act as a single point of contact for them. So who all the way goes to procurement delivery and also fixing these kind of uh, gadgets at their uh, office. And also along with this, some of the collaboration tools, in some cases, if they need to configure some of the uh, uh, external devices, uh, anything if the employee needs, if the employee is not from the tech background, like for example, finance and other stuff, who might need and uh, help in setting up these kind of a tools, that's also been taken care of by these concierge uh, entities. Uh, the another one, again, which I experienced and uh, I've been using this is the business center memberships. So uh, let's say that some of the days the employee uh, who's working from home needs some dedicated time or uh, some time to be uh, in a quiet room. He might have some important meetings or he need to focus and to complete some kind of an, maybe a difficult or a complex task. Um, companies usually partner with these business centers, which are spread across uh, different places and give them a membership card. So where they can go to their nearest uh, thing, near to their house, wherever they are, business center, and they can uh, use these uh, meeting rooms or the small office focus rooms for bluff hours or whatever the flexibility they need. Or even they can use this for some hosting a meetings. And uh, this concept is also, again, kicking in a lot. Now I can see a lot of uh, companies are working on uh, um, the meeting room charge per hour and work, uh, working room uh, charges every hour. So these kind of concepts is also coming up a lot nowadays. These are, I would say, kind of a mandatory. I don't see this as an innovative or an imaginative kind of stuff. But I do have a couple of my friends in, uh, in US and Germany was given me some of the or spoken about some of their innovative things. So which includes obviously uh, with AI and other stuff, we cannot, uh, I mean, forget the meta world. So, so there are companies today having, uh, sending the uh, VR gadgets, headsets to their employees and they are having a virtual meet. So it is like the virtual space in the meta where they can put in the virtual reality goggles and they get into the experience of the 3D world where it's much more immersive. It feels like as if you are sitting inside a conference room. So these kind of uh, still, I mean, for me, it is still a new idea. Uh, those are innovative ways, which I heard from a couple of my friends. And another, um, some of the corporates which are using these kind of AI tools and also caring about the well-being of the company employees have started AI wellness coaches. So where you have fitness coach or wellness coach 
uh, who works with the employees. Again, it's a combination of either a mobile app or the VR kind of a thing where they help in kind of uh, making sure the employees are not burnt a lot, give them a support either physically or mentally, these kinds of exercises. Combination of a lot of uh, stress management tips is also being done by certain employees or certain companies at the moment. The last one, which is a, a kind of a small thing, which uh, it is getting popular now, is virtual coffee breaks. So what is it? Actually, it is during the time, like when we are in the office areas, we used to take a coffee break and we used to have a small get together session where we meet, talk about something not related to work and probably most of the companies have some kind of a gaming area where we have uh, some uh, snooker or whatever games is there. Now, these virtual uh, coffee breaks is also becoming common where again, people are using this time to play some kind of an online games during that time, social interact. So bringing in some kind of a socializing method along with the uh, day-to-day operations and making sure that that bonding uh, is the team bonding is increased by introducing these kind of uh, virtual uh, reality or virtual kind of uh, uh, solutions at the moment. And the last from which I heard from the HR kind of uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, usually the HR team is to uh, increase their employees in showcasing what they did at their home office setup and even coming with Uh, prizes and awards for the most creative and uh, also something unique kind of workspaces which they did. So that improves again some kind of an focus and and interest to the employees to set up something unique which increases with first of all it uh, gives you more uh, kind of an interest to continue working if you interest on the hybrid and also make sure that there is some kind of a motivation behind working from home. So I think these are some of the uh, necessity and innovative things which I have either faced or heard from my uh, peers in the recent years. Very interesting, very interesting. Arvind, uh, you, you, have, you have such an extensive experience working with bigger organizations uh, like VMware and all. So uh, what would be your advice uh, as for the startup especially uh, you know, what kind of strategies and practices that they can implement to establish a proficient and, uh, you know, remote or hybrid work structure. So if, let's say, as a startup founder, uh, you know, who, who is having, a, let's say, for instance, a team of 50 to 100 employees uh, and they, they are planning to go hybrid, uh, what would be your advice as far as the, you know, uh, structure is concerned? What kind of structure, uh, you know, uh, a startup founder like that should follow? Great, uh, Sopnal. So definitely um, implementing any kind of uh, strategy around uh, hybrid or any other such strategy for a startup, I would say it's comparatively easier than doing it in an established company when you're starting clean. So uh, that's one advantage you have. Uh, but again, it has to be very careful. And uh, also there has to be a lot of... Uh, practices, policies has to be defined so that these hybrid or these kind of uh, workforces or everyone in the company knows uh, what is being expected out of them in respect of what mode of work they do in the organization. So the first and foremost is going to be for any startup is creating a set of policies that define clearly communicate to all employees that what is the expectation is being expected from them, either it can be in terms of work hours or it can be their availability or even the different mode of official communications. So after once the policy like these kind of things is set up, the next thing is with uh, in startup nowadays, definitely have uh, some key people uh, all around the world. It's no longer that we are talking about just in country. So when people from different world come into picture or people from different countries come into picture, there is a time zone difference, which is might also be, if it's not being considered, might become one of the problem 
in terms of the uh, growth and also the planning of the day-to-day things. So definitely, uh, we have to work on uh, these kind of scenarios where the employees might be in a different time zone. So we need to make sure how the working time is going to be uh, set, how it is going to be, uh, what is the uh, official communication, if it's going to be different, well, hours, difference, how we are going to communicate and all those things has to be also been done for a start. That's one of the important thing. Usually it has been an offer, uh, afterthought, but uh, I would say these things has to be con- uh, uh, considered at the early stages. And the next thing would be the onboarding. Since again, uh, it's a virtual world now and uh, the people may not be, or the your colleague may not be sitting next to you, might be anywhere in the world. So how the onboarding process should also evolve and we should, or the HR team and other uh, people management team should make sure these processes are also dynamic. They should make sure that the employee who is going to join gets all the resources, either ship or email at the day one, so that there is not going to be any delays or not going to be any confusions uh, on the day one of doing the onboarding. So also, they have to have some kind of a creative kind of an onboarding plan where they onboard the new employees and the communication to the entire team has to be set up. And of course, KPI for any employees, let them be working from remote or physical or hybrid. KPI has to be very clearly set. And as I mentioned earlier, KPIs are better being driven by a system rather than just being communicating over an email or some kind of a phone call. Definitely, the startup has to invest on modern tools, modern kind of services which they need. The first is paramount for any company right now is the collaborative tool. So make sure when you select the platform, let be your email platform or let be your collaborative platform, usually it's going to be a single platform. Make sure it supports collaborative tools like either can be whiteboards or can be uh, any other AI driven apps so that there is a collaboration is already always been uh, kept. And also make sure uh, whenever possible, try to engage using in video calls. So that gives a sense of face-to-face interaction in this hybrid world and other stuff, and which is also very important as a startup. Earlier when I used to do a startup, it was way easier where we used to sit inside a room, inside a building and everyone together and things are getting done much faster and much quicker and much more focused. Uh, definitely, uh, it is kind of a difficult. So, investing on tools, especially the collaborative tools, is very important. So, that brings in the togetherness and that gives the focus for a startup, which is very important to uh, make it a big success. And um, apart from collaboration, is the same cybersecurity. Uh, the startup has to be uh, choosing the right tools, as I said earlier. It's no longer you need to buy the big firewalls and other stuff put in your centralized place. You may not even have a centralized place in this uh, world. So now it's the tools which you choose. It has to be very intelligent enough because these cybersecurity measures are the ones which is going to protect your uh, employees' data and also your companies or your customers' data. So not skipping on it or not considering the later stage the cybersecurity is not the right idea. Investing on the cybersecurity from the day one is much more essential for a startup or for any company at the moment. Also, create uh, a flexible uh, in-office schedule if you have in offices also for a startup. So, create a schedule that accommodates team collaboration, client meetings and other activities that will benefit from the physical presence. And uh, compliance, again, follow, make sure that uh, wherever the employees is there, make sure that the compliance local laws are getting uh, complied with. Uh, again, there are a lot of laws from each country. So make sure everything is being factored in if the employee is from a different country. Last but not definitely the least is 
plan for resilience and contingency as a startup you may not have a lot of people as a backup and other stuff but uh, develop a strategy choose the core team uh, there should not be any i would say uh, problems that arises either during any potential disruption uh, of either can be a, a location is having an issue or a country is having going through a, some tough times or uh, and the office is not accessible might be nowadays there are a lot of new new problems which are arising so make sure that you have a resilience and a contingency plan so that the business sustains and the startup continues to grow and achieves its the billion dollar target or whatever the vision they, they have i think so yeah. these are some of the points yeah. which i have so uh, arvind thanks a lot i think uh, very where i would be very candid with you very very few times i come across uh, you know technology leaders especially who have such a strong hands on uh, you know understanding of uh, uh hr or admin uh, you know uh, scenarios or issues but uh, i i i'm delighted to you know hear from you that you know you not only have a very strong uh, understanding of technology of course as a cto but uh, you have gone through the complete scenario of in terms of you know uh, how to go through uh, this complete process of uh, you know uh, transition to hybrid or remote working uh, mechanism So thank thanks a lot for your time uh, for uh, for this event and Kunal over to you now. Yeah yeah thanks Swapnil thanks Mr Arvin thanks to both of you for your time and valuable insights around the hybrid workforce enablement and a special shout out to Mr Arvin who joined MS10 important family material emergency which again shows his high dedication towards his work commitments. So thanks again sir and I good wishes to you and family. Hey, thanks a lot, Kunal. Thanks a lot, Sapnil. Thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, having me here. And it's really a wonderful uh, talking with you all. And yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for addressing the questions from our listener. And I'm pretty sure that everyone who was a part of this conversation was able to get uh, get some really useful insights. So all the best with the great work that you both are doing to empower the workforce. Cheers and keep rocking. See you all in our next episode. Bye for now.